So we missed something on the stream the other day, which is huge. It actually changes the game up for how you're gonna be specking your characters next season. As our mobility, our recovery, and our resilience are all gonna play a role in our ability class cooldowns. Now, before we get into that, we do have a Season of Dawn giveaway. I just wanna let you guys know, down below is a Gleam link. All you have to do is just join our Discord. We're currently giving away seven copies of Season of Dawn, so if you haven't purchased it, the giveaway ends Monday at 12 o'clock Pacific time, and that's 12 p.m. So you've got approximately two days to get in on this before we pull our winners. And again, I'll contact everyone probably through their email that's associated with their Discord or your Discord username. You will be contacted though in some way. All right, now let's get into the screenshot that we saw. I can't believe I missed this. This was actually something that QJ pointed out to me in Discord, but this is actually the part of the stream where Tomo was going over his Hunter, showcasing some of the mods. But when we pause over mobility here, we see right here it says that the Hunter class stat reduces the cooldown of your class ability. And of course, mobility increases your movement speed as well as your maximum jump height. The main thing to take away from that is your class ability cooldowns are going to be directly tied to that class's associated main ability or like the thing that's tied to them on like an intrinsic nature so like for titans we're all about resilience and armor or that's what we're supposed to be right we're supposed to be tanky warlocks are all about recovery hunters are all about mobility the main takeaway from that is no longer will we have to rely on paragon mods because i'm assuming paragon mods are going to be thrown out so now when it comes to spec out your class ability you can honestly just spec out for your class's favored ability which is kind of a double whammy and a good one as it kind of puts more emphasis on what our classes are supposed to be i can bring my class ability down and pop more titan barricades and simultaneously have max armor or close enough to it and for warlocks to be the ultimate recovery class punching that recovery all the way up to tier 10 drops my empowering rift down substantially and for our elusive hunters stacking on even more mobility which you bad Bastards are already pretty mobile, but whatever. Now you'll have your class ability come back even faster, thus opening up those mod slots for whatever it is you may want to use. And when we look at cooldowns right here, big shout out to Bute Dotson who sent this to me. This is actually the updated Shadow Keep cooldowns. A lot of good information here. Now, whether or not this is actually going to change, I'm not sure. So far, right now, when we look at this, like a Warlock Rift can go from a minute 22 all the way down to 34 seconds, a Titan Barricade can go from 37 seconds all the way down to 15 and a hunter can go from 25 seconds down to 10. Now, again, I have not tested this, but this was data that he took back in October. It is a possibility that these timers may change because notice on the screenshot here, it shows tier two mobility with a class ability cooldown of 25 seconds. So we may actually be looking at a situation where it's not like a direct one-to-one -one from Paragon mods to our mobility stat or our resilience stat or recovery stat. Maybe it's some variation. Maybe it's just an increase overall on our class ability maybe it's just something specifically affecting hunters regardless that's not like major deviation from the cooldowns that we see here either way it goes this change is a very good one as paragon mods to me this past season in combination with all the other mods and the fact that we have these big stat menus on everything just kind of threw some confusion in there now moving on we actually saw some sunbreaker gameplay yes we saw it in action burning mall can continuously tornado itself into an enemy now a lot of people were saying that the damage is not good now we actually did a video on this a while back if you're looking to get the most damage benefits from something like burning mall you gotta get roaring flames times three that's almost a necessity now the good thing about this is that roaring flames times three or roaring flames in general is getting a duration buff notice that it's lasting for a whopping 20 seconds so getting that triple down with a solar kill either with your burning mall super or even before that say you want to just do it with a thermite grenade carrying that buff through that entire super duration should be much easier to do also another reason why his damage was not that good was that he's not overhead slamming so the overhead slam you want to like mix it in right slam do your light melee attacks slam again refresh that damage over time rinse and repeat there's probably going to be an actual method that we're going to use to get the most out of this remember from the sandbox preview patch notes we saw that burning mall itself is getting a duration overall to 28.5 seconds it's light attack though actually got a decrease 
increase in energy costs from 5% to 3%, but its heavy attack did get an increase from 6% to 8%. To me, I almost want to look at heavy attack as just a means to slam, refresh that damage over time, keep that burn up, as well as proccing something like Roaring Flames on any surrounding enemies as it's got that AoE blast. And again, it's going to get a detonation radius increase. So anything that steps close to whatever it is that you're damaging, that overhead slam is going to hit and then continuously keep doing your light attacks over and over again. And again, the beautiful thing about Roaring Flames for both PvE and for PvP, you're going to get 10% damage per stack inside of PvE and 25% damage per stack inside of PvP. All of this sounds beautiful, but when we combine this with something like Syntheseps and Bionic Enhancements, especially if you're surrounded by enemies, it's going to be perfect. I really do hope this is going to be a pretty good damage dealer, especially considering all the hoops you're having to jump through, proccing Roaring Flames times three, combine that with Bionic Enhancements. There's a lot of work being put in to get this super to do well for you in terms of DPS. Now, moving on, we saw the artifact the other day. I could have talked about it longer, but we were just kind of like touching up on the hot stuff i actually want to focus on the artifact mods in the final two columns so first up we're going to start with the fourth column there in the first row now notice it has a fist and a grenade with that cog icon around it pretty sure what bungie's doing right here is they're going to be taking breach refractor and ballistic combo and combining it together now currently on our artifact in season of undying we have those two separate breach refractor gives us grenade energy based on final blows with shield piercing weapons and ballistic combo grants us melee energy based on final blows with shield piercing weapons so i'm assuming they're just taking those two combining it together which definitely ups the value of this mod greatly now it does cost a little more there at five but being a five cost mod you can still double stack it guys pretty sure bungie hasn't said anything about that bug maybe it's not even a bug to them i don't know but if double stacking is still a thing next season this is going to be pretty nasty now moving just below it we see the overload icon with solar in the middle of the grenade essentially it's going to be overload grenades but for our solar classes now we have the same thing but for void grenades this season in which our void grenades can cause disruption delaying ability energy regeneration and lowering combatant damage output it's a very good mod but what makes it so good is when you pair it with the press of darkness currently when i see the new artifact i don't see anything that really resembles a press of darkness for our solar grenades like i'm looking boys i don't see it so next season is a possibility we will not have that same debuff effect that oppressive darkness gave us this past season now moving below that one we have disruptor spike which improves the effects of disruption lowering combatant damage output even further fantastic to pair with something like overload grenades but again works great even with overload rounds as it just improves the effects of disruption overall now beneath that one we have a fist with the unstoppable icon it's definitely the unstoppable melee now for what class I'm not sure. I'm assuming it's either going to be void or solar. Most likely going to be solar, but we'll see. Now, moving beneath that one, we have an icon that I don't believe we've seen yet. It's got a bullet there in the middle. And like at first when I saw it, I thought it was like, okay, is it an unstoppable mod? Because you see the triangles on the end. Maybe it's going to allow like a debuff or something when we use unstoppable rounds. I'm taking some wild guesses here. Y'all let me know what y'all think that may be. It is only going to cost three. So I don't think it's going to be overly potent, but I feel like it's got something to do with unstoppable rounds now moving to the fifth column on the first row we have guardian angel we actually covered this the other day but essentially final blows with either linear fusion rifles scout rifles sniper rifles or your bows can generate or has a chance to generate healing orbs Got some playmaking potential. We'll just have to see how potent those orbs are. Now, moving just beneath it, we have what appears to be a battery mod, but with the void symbol inside of it. Currently, right now in Destiny, we have Arc Battery, which grants an overshield and reduces cooldown during activation for all Arc class abilities. Extremely deadly on the Hunter class. This one looks to be for Void. I hope y'all ready for a Night Stalker meta. Now, moving just beneath it, we've got our Heavy Finisher, which still costs seven. This allows our finishers to generate heavy ammo it does require one half of your super energy i don't know i feel like that one's extremely steep both in the cost of the mod as as well as the amount of super that it takes away now moving just beneath that we have a six cost mod with a fist in the middle of a swirl now the swirl looks void related like that's what i think of when i see that and considering that it also
also cost six. It's in the same exact spot. This is essentially going to be Thunder Coil 2.0 or maybe Void Coil. Now, Thunder Coil grants bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refunds super energy on finisher final blows. The main thing to take away from though is the bonus damage that you receive. It also allowed for our Titan class this past season to one hit melee with ease. Next season, if this is going to be void directed, we can definitely see some potency like things for our smoke grenades on the Night Stalker class could be doing more damage. Middle Tree Void Walker could be doing more damage as that melee already does a lot of damage to begin with. Now it could probably one hit kill Top Tree Sentinel. There's a lot of different options and Bungie has not said anything about artifact mods not being in PvP. So this is probably still going to be a reality even next season. Now moving just beneath it, we have From the Depths yet again. Now, whether or not this grants bonus super damage for our Void class or another class, I'm going to assume that it's Void because notice it's still got like the swirl there in the middle. But Bungie did say the other day that things are going to be more directed towards Solar. So I could be wrong here on some of these mods. All I can tell you is that this is the mod that's supposed to increase your damage of your super while you're critically wounded. And the main thing to take away from this one is that originally this class item mod cost five. Now they've actually dropped the cost down to three, which is pretty interesting. This season alone, we were able to double stack these together. I'm interested to know how this is going to work next season. So guys, those are our mods. That's pretty much everything that we missed the other day from the stream reveal. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else we missed, but that's pretty much it, guys. I'm not going to cover anything else. After this point, we're going in blind. We might go over like some of the gameplay that's going to be posted. Bungie is supposed to post some Warlock gameplay at some point either this weekend or Monday, showcasing the subclass changes on the Warlock. Maybe we might see some more Titan gameplay because we saw a lot of Hunter gameplay the other day. Again, guys, down below is a Gleam link if you're trying to get in on the Season of Dawn giveaway. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.